Uh, thank you very much. I've uh, really enjoyed uh, all of the speakers earlier, and I suppose one of the benefits of going last is they've kind of explained a lot of the topics that I'm going to talk to you about today. But what I would like to do is actually is to talk a little bit about the twists and some of the differences I'd like to highlight, although some things may seem a little bit similar. I'm going to really uh, put my talk into three or four points. I'm going to review syntax briefly, although a lot of it has already been hashed today. I'm going to talk about what was happening of the practice of PCI and coronary surgery in the United States prior to 2009, prior to the first publication of Syntex, and then what happened after Syntex was published in terms of volumes of surgery in PCI, and then why I believe that has happened. You know, as you all know, Syntex was a multi-institutional international study, had a, two kind of parts to it, a randomized arm of 900 patients undergoing PCI, 900 going surgery, but the one thing that people really haven't talked too much about today is there was also a registry arm. And this is an extremely important component because the only patients, again, that were randomized were patients who both the surgeons and the interventionalists thought there were equipoise. There was a very large group of patients that there was not equipoise. And so it's not like a third, third, and third when we hear about the syntax scores. It's really kind of like a quarter, quarter, half because most of those patients in the registry had surgery because they had coronary artery disease that was felt too complex to have equipoise for surgery in PCI. Again, as you know, the study included patients with left main and three vessel disease. We've heard about the primary endpoint at one year. We all know that the curves get greater with time, showing more of a benefit with surgery. Although most of the cardiologists will like to tell us this was only due to repeat revascularization, we know this was not true. In the entire group, there were more myocardial infarctions in patients undergoing PCI. And I think we've talked about why that happens. Uh, it's unfortunate that Dr. Corzon left because I'd like to have his opinion on some of my uh, comments that I'm going to make. As you know, in the overall group, there was no difference in cardiac, excuse me, in overall death. There was a difference in cardiac death favoring surgery and no difference in stroke. As we said, there are two arms, three vessel disease and left main. Three vessel disease is really where surgery shined and really showed its benefit over PCI. It was not only decreasing repeat revascularization and decreasing myocardial infarction, but there was also lower death uh, in patients undergoing surgery. We've heard about the Syntex score. The point I would like to make is patients were not stratified or randomized by Syntex score. So this is just an observational study. It's a univariate analysis at this point. None of us would accept a paper for a journal with only univariate analysis, but guidelines on top of guidelines have been based on this, and I'm even going to talk about why I think it's important. But just be careful. There's no stratification or randomization of these patients. This was an analysis that was done afterwards. As we've heard, in three-vessel disease and low syntax scores, there seems to be similar outcomes. However, when you get to more complex disease and intermediate or high risk, surgical patients do better. And as David had pointed out, nearly three-quarters of patients with three-vessel disease should probably be treated with surgery. There are many ways of coming up with this number, but as you can see, what this graph did was include the patients from the registry who had three-vessel disease who were felt to be too complex for surgery or too bad morbidities, uh, excuse me, too complex for PCI, and their morbidities were too great for PCI. So you come up with a number of three-quarters of patients with triple vessel disease should be treated surgically, with about a quarter where you can treat with equal outcomes with PCI or surgery. Left main is a different story. We know that the patients in the left main group, for the most part, did as well. And this is really true in the, in the low risk and intermediate. However, when you get to these complex diseases, patients do better with surgery. And why is that? is because left main is rarely an isolated lesion. We looked at all patients undergoing left main, uh, excuse me, undergoing cabbage for left main at the Cleveland Clinic prior to PCI being done for surgery. And almost 60% of those patients have triple vessel disease. Only 5% have isolated left main, and about 15% have left main plus one vessel disease. So left main is rarely an isolated lesion. And again, when you take and you bring in the Syntex registry, you see that probably two-thirds of patients should be treated with surgery. Again, similar numbers as to what Dr. Taggett had showed us earlier. 
Well, after Syntex was published, there's really been a lot of publications in Mavering Surgery. This is actually written by a pretty famous cardiologist from New York. Cabbage strikes again, you know, that cabbage is the way we should treat patients, and came up with an algorithm that we have been talking about all this morning. Complex disease surgery, non-complex disease, PCI, whether it's left main or triple vessel disease, probably about a quarter to a third of patients can be treated equally, but two-thirds to three-quarters should be treated with surgery. We've also had something developed in the United States called the appropriate guidelines. As many as of you know, there have actually been prosecution of interventionalists in the United States by the federal government for fraud. And the cardiology, the interventional community, is really on their heels right now in the U.S. We've had interventional cardiologists sent to jail. And so the cardiologists, the way they're defending themselves is defending uh, an appropriate guidelines. Now, you could argue that there have been a few interventional cardiologists that have spoiled it for the group, and that's unfortunate. But the benefit of the appropriate guidelines is it says when cabbage is appropriate, and you can see in all of these things that we're in syntax, cabbage is appropriate. But in those groups that we're talking about, the cardiologists are even saying there's uncertain benefit or it's not indicated. And it's not indicated in left main and complex disease. And in these intermediate groups, you can go both ways. Now, we've got publications from cardiologists. We have appropriate guidelines written by cardiologists, all favoring surgery. But what's happened? I think to understand what's happened in North America, it's important to understand, and probably the same thing happened in Europe, what happened before Syntex was released in 2009, and then what's happened afterwards. And does the community believe that the results of Syntex are generalizable to today? And I think that's where the big question is, and um, I'm sorry that Dr. Corzon left. Well, let's look at what happened in just in terms of revascularization in the United States prior to the release of Syntex. As you can see, there was an overall decline in revascularization, either by cabbage or PCI. But I think the most striking thing on this graph is what happened with the introduction to drug-eluting stents, and that's kind of shown in yellow. It really took over the PCI market. The other thing that happened with drug-eluting stents is that it, it, it made cardiologists believe that they were no longer limited, in my mind, to what studies have shown, but to what they could do. If they could stent something, then it was appropriate to do it. And I think there are some studies prior to Syntex showing that the introduction of drug-eluting stents itself expanded the use of PCI in both left main disease and triple vessel disease. This is looking at a study that was done uh, looking at the NCDR, the National Cardiovascular uh, uh, Database uh, Registry of the American College of Cardiology, showing that after the introduction of drug-eluting stents, PCI for left main went up and cabbage for, for left main went down. No data to suggest that this should happen, but this is what happened. And then if we also look at the Crusade trial, which was looking at patients who presented with a myocardial infarction and had triple vessel disease, look what happened after drug-eluting stents were introduced. The number of patients who had presented with a myocardial infarction didn't have to be a, you know, an ST elevation, just an MI, that were treated with cabbage and PCI. Prior to the introduction of drug-eluting stents, you could say it was about 50-50. After drug-eluting stents, the amount of cabbage surgery went down and the amount of PCI interventions went up. No data to support it. However, that's what's happened. During the same period of time, there was a study done, <coughs> excuse me, that looked at if a patient had a class one indication for surgery, what happened to them after the introduction of drug-eluting stents? And you can see that across the board, the number of patients being referred to surgery went down, and the number of patients undergoing uh, stenting went up. Again, no data to support it. It was just what could be done. So to try to answer what happened after 2009, what happened after the inter introduction of the results of Syntex, there's no reports out there to tell us what happened. There's no uh, series or observational studies. So what I did independently was look at the data from the Society of Thoracic Surgeons and the American College of Cardiology. The SDS has a national database, and about 95% of the cardiac surgery programs in the United States contribute to this. The American College of Cardiology also has a, a very extensive database, and they have 
the NCDR. And the NCDR has multiple sub-databases. But one of them that they have is the CAF PCI uh, registry. And so I, I use that to try to figure out were there any changes in practice that we could see before 2009 and after 2009. Well, here's the overall number of isolated uh, coronary operations performed in the United States. Again, 95% of the programs. And it's been relatively stable at between 140 and 150,000 operations per year. However, the number of sites participating in the STS database has gone up. And so you can see that that number doesn't really reflect the numbers. Actually, the number of surgeries has actually declined, and the actual number of operations done per site has also declined. How about if we look at the cath registry? Now, you can see there's been a, a very large increase in PCIs, but again, this is very deceptive because the number of sites uh, participating in this registry has gone up and is believed today to be about 90% of all programs in the United States that perform PCI contribute to the ACA uh, CAF uh, PCI database. But you see the number of PCIs are going down as well. Again, a general reflection of what's happening with uh, uh, the treatment of coronary artery disease, both surgical and PCI in the U.S., is going down uh, with time. If we take the S STS database and then divide the patients having surgery by single, double, or triple vessel disease, you can see that the percentages have remained relatively constant uh, over the last uh, 10 years. So na no change from prior to syntax to after to syntax. How about left main disease? It also has stayed steady. I think what we would have expected is probably we should have seen a little bit of a rise in triple vessel disease and maybe some changes in left main. It's really hard to predict what would have happened if syntax had an effect. Well, how about the cath registry? What do we see? We see the same stability. We would have expected probably to see a decline. Now, as we've said, 75% of patients with triple vessel disease should probably be having surgery by many ways that we can see. 140,000 cabbages, 75% of that, maybe about 100,000 operations a year. If we look at triple vessel disease, it's about 10% of a 600 uh, thousand database, so 60. So maybe the odds and, and the rations are not uh, that bad. But either way, Syntex does not appear to have had an effect. However, it did embolden the cardiologist maybe to do a little more left main stenting, as we've seen a little bit of an increase. Not dramatic, but a little bit more. And just to see whether my kind of ideas were correct, we can look at a study that was done afterwards that looked at Medicare beneficiaries which again shows stability to cabbage and stability to PCI. However, more PCIs are done as outpatient. So I think we can say that Syntex had absolutely no effect at all. And this brings up the question, well, why not? And I think probably is the most interesting thing. When you talk to interventional cardiologists, and to be honest with you, I work with, I work with very rational cardiologists. I, I like the interventional cardiologists at the Cleveland Clinic. They're very easy to work with. I refer them patients, and they refer me patients as well, because we kind of look at them as complementary procedures, not competitive. However, when I ask them why Syntex hasn't had any effect, it's outdated, it doesn't matter. It doesn't represent today's practice. We have important understandings today of incomplete revascularization, or what we might want to call residual ischemia. We can also talk about FFR, and then we have better stents today. I think we heard a little bit about residual ischemia and how bad that is. The more ischemia a patient has, the more likelihood they are to have an event. Now, one of the things that's interesting is we hear a lot about FFR. The ACUITY study was an interventional cardiology study. And um, people have taken that study and then have looked at how many patients were completely revascularized. And they, and they calculated something called the residual syntax score, which is an anatomical score, not a physiologic score. We heard a lot about physiology today. It's suggesting to us that anatomy doesn't matter. And this is where I have a little bit of a problem with their interventional cardiologists, because depending on what day of the week it is, yeah. they talk out of different sides. We hear a lot about physiology, but then, hey, anatomy matters. Because when we look at the ACUITY trial, we see that the greater the residual syntax score, the worse the patient does. And that 
the syntax score was residual syntax score, incomplete revascularization, residual ischemia, whatever you want to call it, was related to death, cardiac death, myocardial infarction, and repeat revascularization. No physiologic measurements here, just anatomy. And again, another way to look at it is if we look at how successful PCI is at complete revascularization, only 40% of the time can they completely revascularize a patient. And the majority of the time, those are patients with low syntax scores, so non-complex disease. And it might be why they do well in the low syntax group, because they can actually completely revascularize those patients. They can get rid of the residual ischemia. Once we get to intermediate or complex lesions, they can't. But they say, we have an understanding of this now. So when we approach our patients for PCI, we're going to get rid of the residual ischemia. Syntax doesn't matter. The other thing that I think was interesting, and, and I don't think Dr. Corson completely understood my point. This is the FAME study, and it's the natural history of patients that theoretically have non-ischemic producing lesions. As you can see, the difference is really within the first two, three months suggesting that it's the stenting procedure that is causing the problem, and the stent doesn't change the natural history of disease. So if we don't put the stent in, the patients do better. If we put the stent in, they have myocardial infarctions and stent thrombosis. Is that true of bypassing a vessel that doesn't have bad stenosis? That's not true. We know that doesn't cause problems. The graph may close. Now, none of us want to do surgery on patients who don't need surgery. Most of us, the complexity of the disease that we see today is so advanced, they clearly need surgery. But again, taking something like fame, where the problem is the stent, and the problems related to the stent, and saying that applies to surgery, to me, is a very large leap. But again, the cardiologists say that the problem with syntax is it wasn't physiologic driven. Again, we have acuity, which says we should be anatomically driven. Again, I think it depends on the day of the week. And then we hear we got better stents today, but I think as Dr. Taggett had pointed out, we saw the best trial uh, last week in the New England Journal of Medicine for the American Cardiology, which is, again, the newer stent and no difference from syntax. The stent is not the problem. It's the procedure. They, and when we overuse the procedure, we have bad outcomes. So again, I'm sorry to say Syntex has not changed the practice in North America, and I think it's because the interventional cardiologists believe that the greater understanding of the disease and what leads to consequences in disease, they can then alter their therapy. I'm not sure that's uh, completely true. But thank you very much for your attention.